Welcome everyone. I'm going to turn off my video here and share my screen with you, but it's great to be spending this time with you. Um, so let me stop this video. So my name is Teresa Slotic, and I am going to be talking to you about North Star Digital Literacy um, assessments today. Um, and I, um, I'm not sure how many of you know about the assessments or not, so I'm going to pretty much go over everything with you. And if you have questions, I would love to hear them. Some of you may be familiar with um, North Star, and if that's the case, I will be talking about some of the ways that we're um, using North Star to help in this time when there's remote teaching. Um, so first of all, I want to start out by saying that North Star is a program of Literacy Minnesota. And um, you may have heard of us, our, our former name, we just changed our name this year, was um, Literacy, it was the Minnesota Literacy Council. And so we've been around for about 50 years. We are very involved in um, the adult basic education world. Um, and have been, we have six of our own schools here in Minnesota, but we provide statewide training to, um, pro to programs for their staff as well as for volunteer teachers that might teach at their schools. And we are also nationally recognized for many of the free, much of the free curriculum, teacher training tools that we have on our website. Um, and, and the advocacy that we do. Um, so that's kind of the bigger organization. Um, North Star itself is a part of that. And you can see from this that we are used very widely across the United States and in several other countries. And as a matter of fact, we've had um, recently several countries ask us to, uh, North Star right now is only in English, but they've asked us if we could translate it into uh, not to other languages. So it is um, a, something that uh, around the world people are needing digital literacy and um, are finding North Star to be one of the only uh, products that addresses digital literacy on a very basic level. So um, <clears throat> here's my question for you, and you can put this in the um, in the chat, I actually let's put it in the Q and A just so I can see that. Um, so, how does it affect people to not be able to use computers? How have you seen it affect um, people you know, your learners, yourselves? Maybe just type type in a couple examples in the Q and A. Can't access unemployment insurance. Yep. Can't use email to apply for jobs. That's right. Um, you can't do banking online, fill out applications, the children's schoolwork, or even talk to the teachers sometimes if they're sending emails. Yeah, um, a lot of jobs do require some digital knowledge. Um, registering for classes. All right, you all have great answers. Thank you very much. I am sure that there are many more. I won't um, read them all at this point, but I, I think those are like great um, examples of how detrimental it can be to people to not have um, digital, you know, basic digital literacy skills. I don't think it was mentioned, but I'll, um, most healthcare now are on portals. So to check your results of your lab, um, those are, someone wrote, unable to get through life, period. And that's a very good, good answer. Um, and someone wrote that they teach English and a lot of their students aren't able to participate in the online class. So that's true, especially in this time, people are who are not um, digitally literate are having a hard time, not only for themselves learning English or uh, going to school, but also helping their children too, who are now forced to do online learning. I've also noticed, uh, known a lot of people who feel that they're disconnected. So maybe they don't know how they can, <clears throat> they wanna have digital literacy to connect with their grandchildren, for example. I've heard quite a bit from people. 
Um, and there's also a greater connection with just what's going on in the world if you can't access the internet. So North Star was started in 2008. And at that time, if you remember, we were in a, a recession as well. And um, we, the local library here in St. Paul was seeing a lot of people coming in asking for digital skills training. And um, the library did have a computer lab, but they didn't know for sure what they should be teaching or how to assess if people were actually learning it. So they asked us if we would make an assessment to, to help them you know, with this issue. So we gathered um, experts from kind of around the nation and looked at what should the standards be for each, what we call module. So for basically, what do you need to know for email? What do you need to know for um, doing a career search online? And we created a, and then we built the assessments around those standards to show competency and understanding of those standards. Um, we also, because we are uh, an organization that is an ABE, we wanted to create a product that was accessible by as many learners um, as possible. So we created the product to be used by um, learners who have an intermediate or higher English level. So we, we weren't able to reach um, <clears throat> very basic English language learners, but the, the product was built so that there, as you'll kind of see, there are um, words that are written and then there's a voice that's um, talking about what's being written and people can play that. that um, oh, I'm sorry, someone asked what is ABE, adult basic education is what we have done. So um, especially working with we especially work with people who are either um, English language learners or getting their, um, working on getting their high school equivalency degree. That's what we, our organization often does. Um, so that's why we kind of, our focus was on making this very accessible and easy. Um, language was easy to use. Um, it was shorter sentences. So this is something that wasn't really out there. We also um, really believe that, the, that these assessments um, be used to help people rather than, for example, using them to not hire someone. So we, we, if organizations want to use them as a gatekeeper, we kind of um, try to prevent that. Um, we are a nonprofit ourselves. And so we wanted to, well, I should say back up a bit and say, so we created this initially for the St. Paul Public Libraries and it's an online product. And we really thought it would only be used in St. Paul. And then because there's really nothing else at the time and still like it at this level, um, it just kind of um, spread on, on its own and became very widely used. Um, and we, we, because we're a nonprofit, we wanted it to be affordable to um, other nonprofits and, you know, any, any institution that would like to use it. So there is um, an aspect of it that is free that anyone can use. And then there's um, also a su subscription aspect. And I'll, I'll, as we go along, I'll kind of uh, explain the differences. And the subscription aspect is, it's, um, a yearly subscription, very moderately priced. We really only charge to be able to kind of keep up with um, new technology and add, new, add in new features. So that's our main goal in um, sharing and having North Star. So North Star, as I said, was started out as assessments. <clears throat> and for a long time, that's, that's the main focus. And I will get into all four of these things um, as we go along. But at some point, um, many, many organizations were using us. And I should say too, that we have organizations who are, um, that, that do career pathways, we have community colleges, we have some businesses, we have libraries, we have um, 
uh, as I said, adult basic education. So there, it kind of runs the gamut. A lot of different organizations use us um, <laughs> workforce centers. But many people were saying, this is great, we have the assessments, but if someone doesn't pass, um, in the past, we would direct them either to the, <clears throat> the site would have a class or they would somehow train the people or there are free online um, sources on the web that didn't always correlate exactly with, with the assessment or um, sometimes they'd have to go through a lot of extra information to, to learn um, the different modules. So people were asking us, can you create curriculum? And we uh, decided that we could. So we have, um, as I said, we have, or I don't think I said, but we have 12 assessments, 12 assessment modules. And we're about a little less than halfway through in creating the curriculum for those modules. Um, so that would be more like a classroom-led instruction or even a one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Well, then we, people were very happy about that, but we also got feedback that um, could we do something where a learner could learn on their own? So we've just um, recently, in the past couple months, released North Star Online Learning, and that cur currently has one module, which I'll show you, um, and we are creating more modules for that as well. Uh, and then the last feature is also really important, I think, because it lets you, um, it gives you reporting features so that you can go to whoever your funders are or whoever um, you need to give results to and show, you know, assessments you've given, how many, how many have been successful. Um, so it's just a really handy feature for that reason. So we're gonna talk about assessments first. And um, as you can see, the assessments are, there's 12, and they're broken into kind of three general areas. The first is really, the first, essential computer skills, the first three of those um, are, are something that everyone should be able to pass before they go on to other um, assessments. But that being said, you don't have to do them in any certain order. You don't have to do all of them. Um, you might just be interested in, um, you might have someone who's just interested in PowerPoint and, and learning PowerPoint and seeing how well they do on that assessment or um, the career search skills, for example. So other than making sure that someone can do basic computer skills and you know that they know what a mouse is and they know how to turn things on and off and kind of basic things, um, it's really up to you and your learners as to what, you, what assessment modules you would wanna use. These assessments are the assessments themselves are free to anybody to take on our website. <clears throat> um, and then if you have the subscription, of course, all the assessments are included as well. Um, and the uh, I'll, I'll talk about the difference in a second. But when you have, <coughs> when you take an assessment, you will get this results page and it'll let you know if you passed or not. Um, and we, uh, in our assessments, say that you need 85% to pass. And if you look down at the green column, you can't see all of it because it, this is a picture, but it would list all the skills that you had mastered. And then the purple column would list what you need to work on. So if, let's say, you got 70%, it would tell you those things that, that you or your learner needed to to work on um, before you took the assessment again. Uh, if you are a subscriber, you can claim a badge, which are sometimes used in various educational um, settings and sometimes for jobs, which is basically a, a electronic certification. And um, if you're a subscriber, the big difference is also is that when you pass, um, uh, uh, assess, when someone passes an assessment, they will get a certification because the assessment has been proctored. So you can verify that they weren't using notes, they weren't asking someone else, that this is a true reflection of how much they know. If someone takes the assessment, the free assessment online, 
there is no certification because there's no um, verification that they didn't have help. So th that's one of the major differences. When we first created the certifications, we thought, um, you know, their biggest benefit would be to show employers what people had learned. And that definitely does happen. Um, there was, I know there was a patron at the library who came in wanting to learn Excel because he said that if his, uh, that his boss said if he learned Excel, he would get a promotion. So he passed the Excel certification or passed the Excel assessment and got the certification and brought it to his boss and got the promotion. However, we found that actually the, the biggest benefit of certifications is the confidence it will build in your learners um, or your participants or whoever you're working with. Many people who, um, I work, I help out in one of our computer labs, and at that computer lab, we get a lot of people who are um, uh, in their upper 50s, lower 60s, who have been doing manual labor for most of their career, and now just physically can't. And so they're looking to, to reskill themselves, but it's been a long time since they've been in school, and sometimes they haven't had great experiences in school. So they're very, nervous and scared and then compound that with computers which they may not know much about <clears throat> and when they pass the assessment it's like this light goes on um, in their eyes it's it's kind of amazing to see um, and I've had people start crying for joy I've had people give me high fives and I I see it too in them able to um, translate that new confidence into other things so I was working with a woman who uh, was interviewing for jobs at the same time she was um, practicing her computer skills and she was feeling kind of stuck and she was feeling like um, she wasn't getting second interviews and she was, I think, feeling quite down. And she passed, after, after some struggle, she passed the PowerPoint um, assessment and, and she like got the certification and she went out and she had another interview and she just brought that confidence to the interview and, and ended up getting a job. And it was remarkable to see the change just in her, her um, demeanor and her kind of attitude um, just from tack tackling that, what to her had been a little bit difficult. Um, it also helps with uh, persistence because the modules themselves are short enough that you do get a win. Uh, you can see your results. So for example, if you're studying for something long-term like um, getting a GED or something that takes a while, it's hard to see the end and it's hard to feel like you're making progress sometimes. And here you can, you can definitely see the different you know, that you are making progress. It doesn't take that long to learn the materials and then pass the assessments. We, at one point, were gonna give certificates with, um, you know, someone's name and then all the modules they had passed on one certification. And people didn't like that. They wanted to have a separate one for every module they had passed. And some people have framed them. Some people put them up on their Facebook page. Um, so it's a really a fun thing to see. I, I did have an organization that um, they are a prison and they, they have classes particularly for young men to get their GED and uh, they weren't, the young men weren't seeing the value of studying or being in school really. And at the same time they started North Star and they, they all felt that they knew computers because they all had cell phones, um, but they um, realized that cell phones are different than computers and weren't able to pass the assessments right away. Um, so then they were determined to study and, and did and pass the assessments and that kind of persistence and that idea that studying can help you get places transferred over to them um, learning different, you know, more educational um, English, I'm not English, but 
math and science for their GED. So that was kind of exciting. Um, this is a picture of one of our learners who did pass all 12 of the modules. I don't, I don't know that he's holding all 12 of the certifications, but um, just to show that it is a really, a really um, something of pride for people. All right, so what are assessments used for? What do people, what are organizations using them for? Um, it can often, um, people often use the, or organizations often use them, let's say they're gonna use a distance learning platform, a different distance learning platform. They might, want, they often will use the assessments to be sure that people have the minimal skills of email, um, internet basics and computer basics, just so that they're able to do distance learning. Um, they often um, are used, they can be used for employment, obviously, for higher education. Um, a lot of times teaching staff or, or people who are tutoring themselves, they may be proficient in um, digital literacy, but they may not know, um, the, they may not know how to teach it. So this kind of gives them an idea of what, what standards are in each assessment. And also, um, I feel like even, even though I use computers a lot, I have definitely learned things by taking the assessments that I didn't know. So they do help us all become more proficient. Um, we do have several organizations that use them to upskill their own employees. Um, and then, People use them to, um, if they're gonna use, uh, like if they're gonna go to higher level computer skills, they have people go through these assessments first to make sure they're ready for that. During this time, um, when we're all pretty much stay at home, um, I talked about how our assessments are proctored if you have a subscription, and we do now have remote proctoring available and it's, it's fairly easy. You would just use something like Zoom and um, you kind of verify that the person's identity and you monitor them while they're taking the test. And North Star has um, a, a great um, document that kind of outlines exactly how to do it. It's, it's quite easy, but it's been very helpful um, to people who don't have brick and mortar places at the moment for their, for their um, learners or participants to come to. Um, so I'm going to switch to talking about curricula. And I kind of told you why we started creating it. And you can see we have um, these six units now available. And then um, the next three should be available in, in the next couple of months. Um, so when we are, we're making curricula, we um, again, went with the um, audience in mind of people who maybe English wasn't their first language or maybe they're people who had not been around technology obviously for a while or at all and so we tried to in the curricula make it um, not only easy for teachers to use but also to make it accessible for many different types of, of learners job seekers that kind of thing so we aligned the each curriculum module with our standards. So the standards, the assessments, and the curriculum are all aligned. We tried to, as you probably know, using computers, the best way to learn computers is to actually use them. So the curricula is meant to be um, either teacher-led or tutor-led, but is very um, interactive. And I would say there's a lot of repetition, a lot of um, opportunity for repetition. Um, and what's really nice about the, this curriculum is you don't have to teach it from start to finish. You can pick and choose what might be useful to you. Uh, and so, for example, I was talking to a group of, of um, oh, people who were helping their, uh, their participants get jobs. So they would pick, they would pick out of the, the lessons um, the aspects that dealt with applying for jobs. So it might be how to go online, the internet would be one, how to use, um, how to fill out forms online, 
how to use email, how to um, properly write an email, um, how to create a, a resume. So, so it would be kind of, they could pick and choose different, different aspects of the curriculum that are related to what they were doing. Um, I myself don't have a teaching background, but I did teach the internet basics curriculum to a group of um, people and it was very easy to use. So I didn't have to spend more than probably 15 minutes of time um, ahead of time with prep work. And that was mostly just making handouts. Um, this was back when we were face to face. Um, and so it is really well laid out. It's very easy to follow. Um, and I, I um, really found it helpful to me as a teacher, uh, to me teaching it, but also to the um, people that I was teaching. And in fact, one of the women, um, we had a break over the holidays and she, I'm in Minnesota, she had gone to Florida um, to be with family and she came back and on the day that we had our class and she said, oh, I came back on a 1, 1 a.m. flight and our class was in the, in the evening. I said, well, I'm so glad that you um, made the time that you're here. I know you're tired. And she said, well, I could have come back tomorrow. It would have been half, half the cost. And this woman was a um, custodian and she lived in public housing, so she didn't have a lot of money. It's just that it would have been half the cost, but I didn't want to miss the class because no one else has ever taken the time to teach me this. And so it was just very moving and at how important it was. Uh, someone asked me if this is, if the curriculum is available in other languages besides English. And not at this time. We are really hoping to translate everything of North Star into different languages um, and are currently looking for funding to do that. So, um, but it would be great if we could do that. So each module has about six to eight lessons. And they, and again, you could teach this as a class or you could um, adapt it for one-on-one -on -one instruction. So a lot of times as I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people, I'll just pull out some of the worksheets or some of the practices and we'll go through the practice of something that they need help with. So it not only is good as a curriculum, but it's really good at um, letting you know how to talk to people and how to teach people um, this, even in, let's say, in not passing, but in a smaller situation. Um, it depends, depending on your class size and the background of the people, we say it takes about two hours for each lesson. Mine was a smaller group and, um, but it was composed of um, ELL learners, and it took, took maybe an hour and a half for each lesson for us to go through the lessons. And, we, and they had a lot of questions, and what was really fun was to see how engaged they were. Um, they really, the lessons are, are well written for adults so that they find it engaging and they relate it to their own lives, and that was um, very exciting to see. Um, as we are all now um, working remotely, we also have created at North Star um, an instructional guide on how to use the curriculum remotely with your, with whoever you're um, helping. And so there, there are step, very detailed step-by-step -step, uh, guide on how to do that, and it's it's actually um, quite easy to to use it remotely. Um, of course, as long as your, your students have the, the capacity, um, which as we know is often a problem with um, digital literacy. Um, the lessons are all, they kind of all follow the same format. They have the teacher modeling and explaining something, then they have um, ideally people working together if they, if they do, but you could skip that part if there's only one person. And then they, there's some repetition of practicing the skill. It also always includes vocabulary um, because oftentimes, even, even those of us who um, use computers all the time, sometimes 
people are like, well, what's the, um, I don't know, where, where do I, what does URL stand for or something like that. So it kind of um, it also uses that vocabulary so that everyone knows what is meant by a certain term. And this I, is not that clear. It doesn't come through that clear on your screen, I am sure. But it kind of gives you, um, this is what the first page of any lesson would look like. So you can see the vocabulary list in the, in the um, right hand upper corner. It talks about what standards it addresses. At the bottom, it's great because it tells you as a teacher what you need to copy and um, any, any other prep that you need to do. So it's really um, nice if you're teaching to just quickly glance at it and see what this lesson's about. As I said, we recently have created what we call North Star Online Learning so that with a little bit of help, um, students can get started on this and it's something that they can see on their screen and it's a tutorial, but then it also directs them to practice. So I am going to, um, I'm going to show you an example of what the basic computer module looks like. And what you should, once I click on the link, what you should see is you'll see, um, you'll see a picture of a computer and then you'll hear a woman reading and I will let her finish reading and then I'll um, talk again. But this is an example of one of the kind of instructional pieces of the um, North Star Online Learning. If you look closely at the outside of a computer, you will see buttons and many small holes. These holes are usually called ports. Each port has a specific shape for different uses and different types of plugs. So you can see that she reads very slowly and clearly for someone who, um, let's say, doesn't um, speak English as their first language, but also for someone who maybe is um, just concentrating a lot. It's, it's not like they're rushing through and you can go back and listen to it again over here with a little arrow as many times as you want to. You can see the words in case uh, you're, you have someone who's deaf who's using it, um, which we have had. So it's trying to be as accessible to people as possible. So now if I click, that was kind of the one tiny bit of the tutorial. Then if I click next, here is a flash drive that you can plug into a computer. Click on the port that matches it. You can see then that it asks the, the person viewing to test their skills to see if they actually um, understand what's going on. So then if I click on the port, it will tell me I got it right. If I got it wrong, it will tell me, um, you know, no, this is not a USB port, the USB port is here. And um, so that is really nice for people to get that real-time feedback. And then what I also like about it is when I click next, it will give me um, a check mark to say, hey, you got it right. Here are some earbuds you can plug into a computer. Click on the port that matches them. So, um, as we went, as we would go through this module, this um, ASIC computer module, we there would be at certain breaking points there'd be little quizzes, and then the person viewing it would be would have to get the, the quiz right in order to keep going, and if they didn't, it would be, they'd be directed to you know go back and listen again, and then at the end of the module there's another quiz. And if the um, person does well, then they're directed to take the assessment. So it kind of prepares you, um, or it lets you know when you're ready to take the assessment. And what's really interesting is um, we used to have a computer lab that I help out in. Um, we would have people take the assessment and then we had various um, free online resources that we had not created that had been created by other people that we would walk through and help people learn. 
And sometimes people would have to take the assessment several times, you know, with learning in between before they actually passed it. We found now that um, even if people come in and don't, don't do very well on the, the first initial assessment, once they do the online learning, uh, something like 95% of people are passing. So it is a very effective, uh, we found, learning tool. Um, so someone asked if these are free to use for a school. And that's a great question. Right now, because of the pandemic, we are making North Star online learning free to anybody. So you can access it at our website, which I will show you at the end of this presentation. Um, normally, this is uh, something that only subscribers would get, um, whether they're a school or not. Um, and as I, as I think I said, we currently only have the basic computer skills online learning. We um, have internet basics and career search skills in the works and internet basics should be done by the end of May, career search skills by the end of June, um, and then ultimately we plan to do all of the modules as we get the funding to do that. So I see a few more questions. Yeah, so good question. Someone said, will free access continue through the end of May or the end of June or are we playing it by ear? And that is a great question. We are, are playing it by ear to, to kind of as this pandemic plays out. Um, through the end of uh, well, April for sure, May, uh, yes, I don't know about June. Um, so we're kind of just doing this as, as people are kind of forced to stay at home and having to work remotely for now. And then our website will kind of keep people updated as to that piece. The other thing that's nice about um, <clears throat> the online learning is it's it, each student has their own account. So if you um, if you are a subscriber, you are administ administrator, and you can sign up students as you wish to have their own account. And if you do, what that gives them is it lets them see their process, their progress on. Um, oops, sorry. The online learning as well as um, the assessments. So I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. So this is what um, an individual dashboard would look like. And right now, as I said, we only have the basic computer skills, but ultimately all of the um, modules are on here, as you can see. And here it shows that this is for me. And it shows that I have done 27% of the practice questions and I have not yet taken the assessment. But it would show my best, um, had I taken the assessment several times, it would show my best score. And it gives, so it gives um, individuals as well as administrators and teachers the ability to see how, how much um, of the online assessment someone's done, how, what they, which assessments they've passed. And um, then if we hit details, it also will show us that, but it will then go to the different parts of the online learning and say what I've done. So I went through what are computers, what kinds of computers are there, and you can see the green check here. Um, as we get down farther, it will show what I have not yet um, looked at. And if I wanted to go back to um, a specific, you know, like, oh, uh, I don't remember what the different mice are, I could go click here and it would take me back to that section of the online learning. And I saw I had a few questions, so let me, someone said, can we subscribe with a personal account not associated with the school so we can tutor our own group of students? Um, usually it's an organization that would have the subscription and then you can have, um, you can give as many assessments at, at as many sites as you want to. So for example, you know, sometimes it'll just be one library, let's say, that has a, has a subscription and then they can give the assessments to as many patrons as they want. Uh, we also have like the state of Georgia, all the community colleges are 
are subscribed to North Star, so then they all have their own site. Um, someone asked how much it costs. And so it depends, again, on your, your organization. So it depends on how many sites you have and how many assessments you think you'll be giving in a year. It's a yearly subscription. In general, um, and you can look on the website, but in general, it's about $500 a year for a site. But if, if you have a lot of sites, we often give a bulk price that's cheaper. Um, so, and to, yes, yeah, someone asked to clarify current free access would mean students can do the one module online. Yep, that's true. And then they can take the assessments without the certifications. So that's what is available for free. We also have on our website for free um, links to curated online learning that we did not make, but that we feel um, does a good job of, of meeting the standards. We also have the ability to do um, bulk creation of learner accounts. So at this moment, let's say you, you have 30 people that you wanna create um, online learning um, profiles for, you don't have to go in and do everyone separately. You can do them, like pull them from a list you might have or a, an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. So that just makes it a little bit easier to use. Um, someone asked if we use edu.gcfglobal.org as a resource. I personally don't know the answer to that question. Um, I can check it out and get back to you, but I, um, off the top of my head, I don't know. Teresa, can I just chime in on that? Yeah. So GCF, um, yeah, a lot of teachers know about GCF Learn Free, but I'm, my understanding is that GCF Learn Free is its own website with its own created videos and its own created activities. Everything that you're seeing with North Star today is basically developed by North Star. Is that correct, Teresa? Yeah, that's right. Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that, you're, so you're you're totally separate from any other um, other re other websites that are out there, other resources that are out there. Everything that you've developed is developed in house by Northstar. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, the only maybe my confusing um, point was that on our website, the free part of the website, we do link to other organizations that um, we have not, that we haven't worked with, so we just found their sources useful, but that that has not been used to create North Star. That's kind of, those are just external links. The other nice thing, like I said, about, well, one nice thing about North Star, if you are a subscriber, is you have a lot of control over the administration. So you can create your own administ administrators and proctors. You don't have to go to us every time you want to add someone or change something um, and you can run reports by yourself so again you have a lot of um, independence we do have a um, help a help desk that we um, try to answer questions as quickly as possible so if you do have a question or you're ever having a problem you know you can always reach us that way um, but it's nice because you're not dependent on us to do a lot of the administrative um, uh, aspects that you can do yourself. So I do want to show you a little bit some of the reports so you can see what it is that that you may um, find useful to um, see how how much you're using North Star or how effective it is for your site. So one of the reports would show you per site um, what which of the assessments people are taking. So you can see here that, for example, over a, at this site, over a thousand people have taken, a thousand um, assessments have been given for Windows. So this can help you if you're trying to, if you have limited resources and you're thinking, I can only do a few classes, this might tell you what people are wanting or what people are taking. Um, it can also be used in, you know, reporting to say we've given this, these many assessments on these different topics, which is um, always nice. And then it also goes into, of the assessments passed, 
what percentage um, of people have passed them. So you can kind of see what, what things people struggle with the most and what they might need the most um, might either be the hardest assessments or they might just meet, need more instruction on. Um, but it also can give you an idea of, hey, we gave you know however many career search skills and 72% um, of people have now passed them. So that can give you some insight into how your program is running. Um, someone asked if a person if a person can have a subscription, and uh, the answer is no. It would just be an organization that would have the subscription. A person could use the free the free assessments and the free um, right now the free online learning module, um, but they wouldn't be able to have a subscription unless they were like a consultant perhaps then using it for a lot of a variety of learners um, if you feel you have a unique situation like that and you would want to discuss the possibility um, i will show you our um, website address at the end of this presentation and you can can write in your um, your question there and we can always discuss it if it seems like something that might be viable, but um, in general, I would say it's usually, it has always been an organization. If we look at this report, you can see um, also based on modules, which ones have, how many have been given, how many have passed, what the percentage of passing is. Uh, if you go into one of the reports, you will see um, again, that information, but it also tells you how long people are taking to to take the um, assessment, which which is just helpful in planning how long you might you might need to proctor something or how long you can expect it will will take. And it also shows you what questions people are getting wrong the most. So you can see here, question fourteen, a lot of people are getting it wrong. So it could be this can help inform your. Um, teaching because it could be that maybe you're not touching on it or something is confusing about it or the question itself maybe the vocabulary is not understood um, so that can be really helpful in in creating your um, the training that you're doing and then if you are like oh what was what was question 14 why are so many people missing it you can go down here and you can click and you'll actually be directed to the actual question on, on the um, assessment so you're you're able to see what is that question about. The, someone asked what's the difference between new and legacy models modules and the the new modules are what's out there now. The legacy modules are we um, last year we redid the all the assessments um, one to put them on a, a, a better web platform and two just you know as you know, digital literacy is constantly changing, so we wanted to keep them up to date. So the when you actually have the assessments, you are just seeing the the new ones. Um, but at this particular site that I'm showing you, they've been running for quite a while, so they did not lose any of that information from the the um, legacy assessments that they're that many of the learners took, you know, years in years past. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can also see um, by individual kind of question by question what they how they are answering or what they're maybe having problems with. So for example, if we if we look at this individual and we look at uh, Microsoft Word, <clears throat> we can see that he passed what his score was, how long it took him to take it but also what standards he did master and what, what he did not. And then you could even, as an as a administrator or a teacher, look and see, okay, well, in this number 12, what was that question? Here's that question. And although you would never share you know, a direct answer with a user, you could then kind of um, inform your teaching as to what they were missing or what they were confused with, something like that. Um, so that is kind of all I 
have. And I am wondering if you have any questions. Um, this is the website here that you can go to and you can check out, you yourself can check out the assessments and take them for free and, and just see what they're like. Um, you can also, from there, if you're interested in um, trying out the North Star online yourself or with, with any of your um, uh, students that you're working with, you, there are directions on how to give them access to that. Um, you can also see if you want to subscribe, um, there's a, a place to enter your information and get pricing information based on um, how big you are and how many assessments you might give. Um, and to ask any further questions, you can always um, direct questions to me about any of the information um, that I've talked about. Or if you have questions that come up, you know, in the next day or two or three that you think of, um, I'm happy to help you with those. And at this point, I'm going to ask if anyone has any questions. So, Teresa, I don't see any questions at the mm -hmm. moment, but I'm wondering, um, since we have a few minutes, would you mind just kind of giving us a general orientation to the North Star website? and you know, where we can find some of the things that you were talking about um, you know, and how we can contact you if people have questions about pricing. So maybe just a couple of minutes to kind of orient us to what we're looking at when we, when we visit the North Star website. Well, that's a great idea. So let's go to the website. Um, so this is the website and if you scroll down, you'll see there's kind of three major um, sections. One is to take an assessment for free. And we'll go there, maybe we'll do that first. So if I click on that, it breaks it down into those three kind of major areas that I told you about. And it, you can take whatever assessment you want. Um, once again, these are not proctored, so there wouldn't be, um, you wouldn't be given a, a certificate for them. But if that is not important to you or your learners, and you can take them all if you want to. Um, we can take a look, I think. <clears throat> I'm skip some of this intro, but it would give an orientation and then it will um, tell you how many questions there are. And Select all of the internet browser icons, then click next. So this is an example of one of the, qu the first question. Um, uh, someone taking the assessment can always click, I don't know, and move on. They can click to hear it again um, with this arrow. If you go to this menu, you could, let's say you were 10 questions into it and you thought, oh, you know what? I answered question five wrong. I want to go back. You'd be able to go back. Once you complete the assessment, it also asks, are you sure you're ready to submit your answers or would you like to review any of them? Um, so it, it gives you a lot of um, flexibility in, in thinking about um, how you might want to answer a question. If we um, go back, um, if you wanted to become a testing location over here in the blue, you can, uh, and a testing location would be to mean that you have a subscription, you can click here and it, it tells you a little bit, and then it gives you um, a chance to fill out a form or ask a question um, about your site and what pricing would be. Like I said, in general, um, let's just go here and see. Um, it would, would have you fill out your information and then send it in, and then you would get. Um, the pricing for your site. Um, in general, it's about $500 a site. Um, depending on how big you are, sometimes if you're really tiny, it'll be a little cheaper, or if you have a lot of sites, we'll give you a bulk discount. So um, it's always good if you think you have a unique situation to explain that in this um, format. The other section was build your skills. And if we go there, um, that's where, so that's where if you were someone who wanted to learn about um, 
how to going to a place to learn digital literacy, you could click here and then all of you um, who are subscribers would be listed by zip code. So it would help someone find a place near them um, where they could actually work with a testing location. Um, here, number two shows you how you can access the North Star Online Learning right now for free. And then as I mentioned here, um, we can click on this. So the, these are um, other sources curated by North Star, but not created by North Star. So this is the only part that we have not done ourselves that is linking to outside um, sources. So for example, if you are using our, uh, just using the assessments for free and you don't have our curriculum, then you can use these other, these free um, resources that are not tied in any way to North Star, but we just have found them helpful. I see I have a few questions. Um, someone asked if this is accessible from a cell phone. It is, but to be honest with you, some of the assessment questions are very difficult to do. On. Um, so we, we are hoping to make it so that you can, but at this point, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, someone asked if you can get a free account or could you use the assessments for free. So as you saw, anyone can take the assessments for free. You don't have to tell us you're gonna take them for free. You don't have to um, um, notify us in any way. And I, as of today, over um, 4.2 million people have taken assessments. Um, and many of them have done it for free. Um, the curriculum you don't have access to unless you are a subscriber. And let's see, someone said, if we wanted to organize a North Star basic computing class online now and use a course management system, would this require a subscription? If you wanted to, um, yes. If you wanted to have reports on individual learners, if you wanted to have reports overall, um, that is true. If you just wanted to direct, you know, some of your learners to the website to go through the um, actual North Star Online Learning for Basic Computing, um, you could do that. You just want have access to the information of how many people had used it um, or how, how their individual report card kind of. So if I'm a teacher, um, I see that you're logged into the site or signed into the site. Is mm -hmm. there an account that I can use or is it, I can only create an account if I have the subscription? You can only, yeah, you can only create an account if you have subscription. So okay. once you subscribe, you would be given um, access as an administrator to your site and you would um, have as many sites as you wanted, as many proctors as you wanted, as many administrators as you wanted, but you're given a unique kind of ID number to, um, to access your information. Got it. Yeah. And then, um, so, and if you can remind me again on this website, because I've Every so often I visit the North Star website. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a place, and I'm not sure whether we've seen it yet, where you have your um, kind of the, the standards laid out and the curriculum laid out so that, I, so, I, so that if I'm a teacher, I understand kind of what is all the content that's on this North Star, North Star website. Oh, yeah, great, great question. Um, so um, we do have um, a link to the curricula to the standards so that you as an educator would know what are what are the standards um, so here if so what I did was I clicked on assessment info at the top and then I went to just kind of scroll down to standards and here you could get a list of all the updated standards for every module and then um, you can also scroll down and you can you know, like say I just want to know the standards for windows for example and then and so if you would like, we can look at, let's look at this one. So this is telling you what people should know um, in order to be proficient in this module. And then this is what we build the assessments around and what we build the curriculum around. And I've, I've worked with teachers who um, 
aren't necessarily teaching digital literacy, but they want to incorporate digital literacy into whatever it is they're teaching. So they've often found it helpful to um, look at the standards and, and say, okay, yeah, this is this fits in with what I want to teach. And so maybe we'll use this part of the curriculum or this part of the assessment uh, or this assessment to, to work with my larger goal. I'm also curious just in general, I mean, do you find that um, that teachers are, are, have a, like the method that they go about it is like, they'll do an assessment as a pre-test and then do some instruction and then go back to the assessment as a post-test or are they just doing instruction and then doing the assessment? Like in general, do you, do you have some sense as, as to how teachers are actually using the site? Yeah, so in general, um, teachers do do a pre-assessment. One, to see if uh, someone even needs to be in the class, you know, or two, to see maybe, um, let's say they want to hold a class of 20 people. Maybe there's something that all everyone knows so they can just touch briefly on that or not even at all. Um, so it can guide how they tailor their instruction but also it's really helpful to the learner to see where they started and then after instruction hopefully they pass but even if not how they've grown in their um, ability to understand the module so um usually it's it could either be a classroom type of um, situation or sometimes it will be in a computer lab someone will come in they're almost always given the the basic computer assessment first and if they pass that, then they might be given other assessments to kind of see what they know and how far along they are and where they're, um, where maybe they need some help from an individual tutor. Um, so that's how I've seen it um, used. Like I say, I've also known of organizations who have made all their teachers take the assessments if as a prerequisite to show that they are are ready to teach digital literacy. Um, so they have to pass the assessment before they can actually teach the digital literacy. Um, I've seen the assessments given to determine if a, a student is ready for other distance learning. Um, I, I would say that's usually how I've seen it work. And I see we have a bunch of questions. Um, so someone asked what, what ESL levels is North Star appropriate for? Um, so we created it, created it to be used with intermediate ESL or higher, um, or, or um, native English speaker. So um, sometimes uh, when I was teaching the class, I, I found that um, the English language learners could understand the lessons and they could understand the vocabulary that we went over. Um, what sometimes was maybe needed more scaffolding was um, when, for example, they were, we were learning about websites and they were searching for, um, I think they had to answer the question of, on a museum website, how much is parking? Well, whatever the category that was under, if you weren't part of this culture, you might not recognize that as being where you'd find the parking information. So those kinds of things, sometimes I had to scaffold, um, but in general for intermediate or above. Um, and someone asked if I could answer or talk again about how much time lessons will take. So for each module, there's in general six to eight curriculum lessons that go with those modules. And we say it takes about two hours for each lesson. <clears throat> when I taught a smaller class, I would, and it was a class where they had a lot of questions, um, I would say it took about an hour and a half on average. So it, it just depends on your class and you know how how adept people are but we say two hours in general and no uh, someone asked if your organization has an account is there any way to change the percentage required to pass um the answer is no we um the assessments themselves we cannot tailor to individual 
sites. Um, one, we want to keep the integrity of the assessments, you know, just for our own sake. Um, um, and that's really the main reason. So the assessments themselves can't be changed. Um, and the, so the percentage required to pass wouldn't be able to be changed. However, if you are um, administering assessments and you you're finding something where you think the wording is, is not clear or you have a question about one of the questions or something in the curriculum, we get a lot of people, um, not a lot, but we get people writing to us who, who ask those kinds of things. And, and often we will be able to um, work to, to make our product better because of what people are, are giving us feedback on. Um, and also in terms of reporting, if you have specific reporting needs, we can s sometimes create reports that are more specific to your organization. Any other questions that are coming up? Oh, there actually a question just popped up in the Q&A again. Okay. Um, the, someone asked, what is the set percentage for passing? It's 85% for each module. Um, and then if you remember the screen that showed, once you take an assessment, it will tell you what, um, what standards you've passed and what you have not. As we, continue, as we continue to add to the North Star Online Learning, one really nice feature is that once you take that assessment and you see what standards you still have to work on, um, if you click on that, it will take you to that place in the online learning that is talking about that standard. So let's say you got an 83% and there was really only one kind of, or maybe like three different standards you needed to work on. You wouldn't have to go the entire online learning if you didn't want to, you certainly could, but you could go specifically to those areas where you were um, having difficulty, study them and, and, and hopefully then when you took the assessment again, um, have learned what you needed to know. Uh, oh, here's a great question. Do the tests allow for a redo to give the student a chance to pass? Yes, um, they do. You can only take at a proctored site, so that would be uh, a, a subscriber site. You can only take, uh, one, an individual can only take the same assessment twice in any given day. Um, on the free site, you can only take it once on any given day. And the reason we limited it was because we were finding that in some instances, people just kept taking the assessment over and over and over again. And so they were kind of learning the right answer just by um, kind of trial and error. And we wanted to really um, want, hoped that people would actually learn, learn the information um, through other ways than just repeatedly taking the test. So, um, but people do take the assessments sometimes multiple times if it's a, if it's a something they find challenging. Um, and it's nice because then you can see your progress, even if you're not passing, you can still see, you're, hopefully you're getting better as your percentage goes up. And um, that is very encouraging to the assessment taker. Um, someone asked if there are any digital literacy resources available for the beginning level ESL. So I have known teachers who have taken um, the North Star curriculum and um, really scaffolded it quite a bit down and so it might take a lot longer um, to do something. It might take more, um, there are quite a few pictures in the curriculum but it might just take more time and more effort on the teacher's part. But I have um, known of teachers who have used it for beginning level ESL. Um, at, at this moment in time with remote learning, it might be very difficult, especially if, it's, if they don't have digital literacy skills and they're beginning ESL, it might be difficult um, unless you maybe had an interpreter. But, um, but it certainly has been done in the classroom. Teresa, um, can we show people again that um, the place on the North Star site that links to the outside resources? Because I did notice that um, 
I think that Northstar um, does link to some other websites that might be good for the beginning level ESL students. I know that, for example, um, Learning Chocolate, I think, is, is um, linked to a number of times, and teachers have found that particular site to be um, helpful when they're, um, especially when they're helping their students learn some of the basic vocabulary words. Mm -hmm. um, I, haven't, I haven't looked too thoroughly through that part of the website, but if you could show us again where that is, and then yeah. maybe folks can take a look at what you have listed there and think about maybe some of those other resources that they could also use in conjunction with the North Star site. Yeah. So on the main homepage, if you go to build your skills and you click on the see more, you will find number three is view other resources from the web. And what's nice about this is we, so again, these are not things that we created, but we show whether it is a text resource, media, um, or has the learner do an activity. And then it's again arranged by the modules. And um, so then it goes through the different standards and it says, okay, if you wanna learn between different types of devices, there's a print resource and there's a, um, a media resource. And so it will take you to um, this, this website, Computer Hope, and it will show you, um, you know, it explains what the difference between a computer and a tablet is. So that is um, all available on the North Star site. And then it kind of goes through all these different standards that are associated with this module and different resources that you can use to do it. Unfortunately, it doesn't really show you the name of the resource until you click on it. Um, but that is a handy, you know, if, if for whatever reason you just have a few users or you, um, you know, budgets are often tight, so if you can't um, afford North Star at this time, this is a great way to go to different free websites. We try to keep this um, updated frequently. We try to update this frequently. Um, sometimes, as you know, like websites are die or they, they go away. So sometimes the links will um, perhaps not lead anywhere, but we do our best to keep it, um, to keep them viable. So someone said that their school has stopped using multiple choice test questions for summative assessment. They only use it for formative. Do we offer open-ended questions or other writing tests? We do not. Um, mainly, well, I don't know. Um, that's not how it was developed, but also with the ELL component in mind, I think it was felt that it would be more accessible to people if they weren't having to write the answers um, in this. So they weren't having to not only show their digital literacy, but also their, their English language literacy. Um, I would say that if you wanted to use the stand, I mean, the standards as they are, it would require, you know, your site to create questions related to those standards. Again, I'm sorry, on the North Star website, was there an easy way to reach out to you, to contact you with other questions? Um, on the North Star website. Or should they just email you directly or? Yeah, so you can either on the North Star website, you can either um, go to just on the homepage, there will be a um, at the top, whoops, sorry, where it says become a testing location. If you press, if you click learn more, then there's a place to answer questions there. Like here, if we go to learn more and then ask a question. So any question, and that would be answered by anyone on the help desk um, that would be answered by the person on the help desk who would be the best person to answer. So if it was a very technical question, our, our um, you know, com computer designer would answer it. If it was a pricing question, our pricing manager would answer it, for example. Um, however, if you have a question that you want to ask me personally, I'm happy to, to talk to you um, via email. Um, and my email is here on the slide. 
at the top. So either way is whatever you're most comfortable with is fine with me. So I wanna thank uh, Teresa for um, our presentation today. This has been very, very useful, um, helping us learn a lot more about North Star. Um, while we have a minute, because I know a couple of people asked the question, um, Teresa, if you wouldn't mind, if you could stop sharing just so I can show people yeah. um, the OTAN website really quickly. Oh, yeah. And then where we were going to post this information. So I'm going to open up uh, my desktop here. Let me see if I can find the, the OTAN website. So, um, so for those of you um, wanting more information, uh, please go to the OTAN website, OTAN.us. Um, if you look at the top story on our homepage, we do have information about the upcoming activities for the week, um, webinars, um, our office hours are also posted here near the top. And then when you're at the website at the homepage, please click on this COVID-19 field support button. Um, this will bring you to our COVID-19 field support page where we're trying to organize a number of resources that we are uh, want to share with the field, but in time, we will, um, as soon as we can, post um, Teresa's handout and um, a recording of today's session on this, um, in the previous OTAN webinars table, which you find on the page. So again, as soon as we can get those resources accessible, we will make them available on the website. Also take a look at the OTAN resource guide. Um, if you click on this link, it opens up a Google Doc. And we actually do have a little bit of information about North Star here as well. Um, we've worked with North Star for a number of years. Um, and so if you, click on, if you click on the online curricula section, I believe that's where it is. Or maybe it's, um, no, no, no. Actually, I think it's on our homepage, sorry. Put that again. Oh yeah, right at the beginning. Websites to acquire digital skills. So we do have a number of sites listed in addition to North Star Digital Literacy. And um, we actually have a previous video um, from I think last year's uh, Technology and Distance Learning Symposium. So if you also wanna learn more about North Star, you can do it by watching this video as well. Uh, Teresa, actually there's one more question in the Q&A, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, I see that. Um, so the question was, uh, I thought you said at the beginning that the online was free until the end of May. Um, that is, we're, we're kind of going with the, the um, pandemic and not, are not sure how long we'll offer the, the free um, North Star online learning. Um, but since it's, uh, it will be at least until the end of May and, and then perhaps longer, it's hard to say at this point. I will um, officially uh, say again, thank you, Teresa, so much for presenting today about North Star.